This week on Maker Update, a pool game you can't lose, a saw blade bicycle, a modern desk made with simple tools, cardboard whales, extra GPIO, and casting tips from the craftsman. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update. I'm Tyler Weingarner and I hope you're doing well and staying warm wherever you are. We've been getting a lot of snow here in New York, but we're used to it and I hope you're dealing with it well wherever you are. We've got a fantastic show with a bunch of great projects, so let's start out with the project of the week. I love playing pool, but like so many of us, I'm pretty lousy at it. Luckily, so is Shane from Stuff Made Here, and that's why he built a pool cue that can execute any shot flawlessly. We've featured a few of his projects previously on the show, but this might be the most complex one we've ever talked about. There's a lot of layers to solving this problem. A camera mounted above the pool table captures the current state of the table. To help square up the image, he's placed fiduciary tags around the edge as a reference. The image of the camera is fed into an algorithm that then determines the best play possible. That's great, but you still need to actually take the shot with your flawed human arms. That's where this weird robotic pool cue comes in. To correct for all your human errors, the tip of the cue is mounted on what's called a Stewart platform, which is a specific arrangement of six linear actuators that lets the tip of the cue shift and pivot around. A robotic gas-powered piston is able to strike the ball with the exact amount of force needed to sink the shot. A projector mounted above the table shows the proper shot to take in real time, so he knows where to place the cue so the robots can handle everything else. Like with any problem this complex, it turned out there were a million places where it could go wrong. Camera distortions, servo flaws, slipping belts, and even some odd code that was throwing them off. But once he got them all right, the results were extremely satisfying. What's more, he realized he can share the image of the table online, allowing him to play a game of socially distanced pool with friends. He uses a regular queue, while his friends can line up their own shots virtually while the robot queue executes the shot. It's an amazing project and a fun watch. More projects. I know it's been snowing and freezing in a lot of places around the US, and even my local river is frozen over, but I don't think I'm brave enough to try this bicycle with saw blades for wheels. In this video by the Q, he's replacing the normal bicycle wheels with these giant saw blades, and it's easier said than done. But you get to see the whole process of how he makes these modified hubs to mount the new bladed wheels while retaining the brakes and the chain rings. And all that to realize that the blades themselves just cut into the ice. But after welding on some whiter teeth, it rides like a dream. After a long break, Glenn from DIY Creators just released this video on how he made this floating wall desk. Like so much of what he does, this is an elegant modernist design, but he shows you how to build the entire thing with just simple tools. Circular saws, drills, orbital sander, and a jigsaw. There's some LED accent lighting behind the wall mounted panel, and the main shelf has a hidden compartment in the back panel, just in case you need a secret place to store valuables. It's also a testament to the strength of French cleat systems. I recently hung a cabinet with a French cleat, and I guess I don't need to worry anymore if it's strong enough. Over in Hackaday, I discovered this project by Atomic14, where he's recreating the classic game Asteroids using a laser projector and an ESP32. Asteroids was originally played on a vector display, so this is a perfect system to run the game in this modern form. I know how rudimentary the computers and classic arcade systems are, so I shouldn't be impressed that this game can run on a microcontroller, but I am. If you like to combine your tool storage with a little bit of body horror, check out this denture bit holder that I found over in Thingiverse by iPlop. It's a storage container for your driver bits, but it looks like a human mouth. Only the bits are the teeth. The magnets to help secure the bits are embedded in the print halfway through. If you want to make sure that no one ever steals your tools, this might just do the trick. Ugh. And finally, we have another gorgeous meditative build by Xiao Chen Feng. We're all guilty of ordering off of Amazon a little bit more than we should, especially under current pandemic conditions. And while the cardboard boxes recycle well enough, it's better when you can turn it into something useful. And instead, she turns it into something beautiful. After soaking the cardboard in water for three days, she uses this oversized mortar and pestle 
to grind it into a paste and then mixes it with latex to make a coating for this flying space whale sculpture. Time for some tips and tools. On the Offworld YouTube channel, I found this fantastic tip on making 3D prints look like wood. He's starting off with an SLA resin print, but this should work well with FDM prints if you take the time to prime and sand it to a smooth finish. He starts out with a flat brown primer, and then uses Copic inks in a few colors and a cheap chip brush to spread the ink in what looks like a wood grain pattern. It's pretty convincing, and if I'm not mistaken, the pattern looks even better with a worn brush, so maybe this technique is a good use for tired brushes. If you've ever spec'd out a project and realized the board you want to use doesn't have enough GPIO pins for your needs, fret not. This GPIO expander from Adafruit might be just what you need. This uses the I2C bus to grant you an additional 16 GPIO pins for whatever you need. Because they're bottlenecked by the I2C bus, their latency is slower than native pins. So use these for interactions where timing isn't critical. Katni Rambor has a full guide over on Adafruit. Craftsman Steady Crafting just dropped a great video on how to avoid bubbles in your resin casts. Normally you drop the cast into a pressure pot to pull the bubbles out, but if you don't have one or don't want one, this video is for you. He covers how to massage the bubbles out by tilting and shaking the mold while it's still curing, or by breaking the surface tension using baby powder and a few other tips and techniques. Check it. From Gareth's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, I learned about this video from Make Something, where he spends almost 13 minutes geeking out about pencils. Mechanical pencils, wooden pencils, cheap pencils, expensive pencils, and his new favorite pencil. It's a simple tool, but arguably the most important one you can carry with you at all times. He promises several times throughout the video that it's going to be boring, but it just isn't. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, we're taking a look at this older video about circuit protection. It covers a wide variety of ways your circuits can be damaged, from electrostatic discharge to lightning strikes. And you'll also get an overview of the different devices used to protect circuits from damage. Fuses, circuit breakers, surge protectors, this video covers how each of them work and what kind of conditions they protect from. All right, and that is going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for watching. Whether the projects you're working on are fairly simple or as complex as a robotic pool cue, I hope you got some inspiration or some useful tips out of it. Be sure to tell us about it down in the comments and give us a thumbs up and sign up for the Maker Update newsletter so you never miss a show. Huge thanks to the folks at DigiKey for making this show possible and for stocking all the parts. Take care out there. We'll see you soon.